host my name is Neerati Seth your online educator and thanks for watching a video board videos my topic for the presentation is sub phylum vertebrata so let's proceed towards our topic that is sub phylum vertebrate okay vertebrates they constitute the vast majority of living chordates and they have evolved an enormous variety of forms the backbone of vertebrates protects the nerve cords and serves as the axis of the internal skeleton the skeleton that provides strength and rigidity to the body is an attachment site for muscles the vertebrae in the middle region of the trunk give rise to pair of ribs which surround and protect the internal organs okay a cartilaginous or bony case it encloses the brain bone is a substance unique to the vertebrates it was formerly thought that vertebrates uh, with the cartilage skeleton such as cyclostomes and shark like fishes were descended from a early vertebrates that had not yet developed bone okay however very primitive fishes with bone skeletons are known from the fossil records so lack of bone is now believed to be a degenerate rather than a primitive feature okay all but the most primitive vertebrate known as jawless fishes they have jaws and paired appendages okay the fishes and to a lesser extent the amphibians and the reptiles they show a segmental arrangement of the muscles of the body wall and of the nerves leading to them Okay. so um, in short they possess all characteristics of chordate but distinguishing characteristics of subphylum vertebrates are that they possess a notochord during embryonic period later notochord is replaced by a bony or the cartilaginous vertebrae column or spine as i have told you okay second distinguishing feature is that the cranium and the skull it protects the brain third ventral muscular heart with around four chambers maximum kidneys are there for osmoregulation and excretion of course paired appendages which may be fins or limbs are also seen endoskeleton it is composed of bones and cartilages okay what are the general characteristics it exhibits all five chordate hallmarks at some time in their life history okay usually well cephalized that we have seen in class annelida okay so they are usually well cephalized including a well developed brain and a number of anterior sensory structure okay brain is usually encased in a skull made of a hard bone or a cartilage in most vertebrates the embryonic notochord is replaced by a vertebral column or vertebrae okay they possess a distinctive endoskeleton consisting of vertebral column limb girdles two pairs of joint appendages and a head skeleton okay the advancement of vertebrates with hinged jaw which open new food options and the jaw fishes became the dominant creature in the sea okay muscles are there for the attachment to the skeleton to provide movement as i have told you in the first slide often they have a muscular perforated pharynx they have a closed circulatory system with a well developed muscular heart blood is oxygenated as it flows through vascularized skin gills or lungs and uh, first uh, vertebrates were jawless fishes with single caudal fin okay there are about uh, eight vertebrate classes four are aquatic and may be grouped together as the superclass pisces or fishes okay four are terrestrial in case of amphibians that we will be studying in the later presentations okay and semi terrestrial or may be grouped as a superclass tetrapoda or four footed animals okay fishes they breathe water by means of gills located in the internal passages although they may also have lungs as supplementary air breathing organs that will be be studying in the later presentation most move through the water by weaving movement of the trunk and tall all have fins and most have two sets of uh, paired fins that was uh, the 
talked about the one super class that is Pygian, okay, or the fishes. Second super class is Tetrapoda. Tetrapoda means four footed animals. They breathe air usually by means of lungs and never have gills as adults, although the amphibians go through a gill water breathing stage except where the appendages have been lost as in snakes all have two pairs of limbs okay which are generally used for locomotion these are homologous to the pelvic and the pectoral fins of fish okay so that was the talk about the tetrapoda and fishes that we will be studying in detail in the next presentation okay i just brief you about it now, what are the evolutionary relationships of the vertebrates? Speculations regarding vertebrate ancestry have focused on living cephalochordates and tunicates that we have already studied in the previous presentation. Okay. One hypothesis on the evolution of the vertebrate is Garstan's hypothesis that suggested that sessile tunicates were an ancestral stock that evolved a motile larval stage. Garstan speculated that at some point larvae failed to metamorphose. Remember, I have uh, shown you the detailed view of metamorphosis. So, Garstan speculated that at some point larvae failed to metamorphose into an adult but developed gonads or the reproductive organs and reproduced in the larval stage only. Okay, With continued larval evolution, a new group of freely swimming animals were evolved. Garstan called this uh, process morphosis, a term that describes the presence of juvenile or larval traits in the adult body. Okay, What was his uh, hypothesis that called this process pedomorphosis, a term that describes the presence of juvenile or larval traits in the adult body. As you can see, this is the adult SIDN. Uh, remember, we have uh, seen and studied metamorphosis of adult Ascidian. This is the adult Ascidian and this converted into tadpole larva and then it got converted into pedomorphic vertebrate ancestor and then ostracoda. Okay. So, this tadpole larva, it uh, describes the presence of juvenile or the larval traits in the adult body. This adult Ascidian. Okay. So, now come to its classification. Vertebrate uh, was divided into two class Agantha and the class uh, Nathostomata. The one that lacks jaw, jaws is known as Agantha and the one that bears jaw is known as Aganthostomata. Okay. Agantha uh, has a class known as Cyclostomata and Nathostomata, the one who, which bears jaw, is a superclass that is divided into Pisian and Tetrapoda as I have told you earlier in the first slide of this presentation. Pisial means fishes that bears fin okay and Tetrapoda that which are four footed animals okay uh, such as amphibia, reptile, aves and mammals and Pisians uh, bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes okay. Early craniates, okay. Early craniates means included fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, okay. Feature a chamber of cartilage or bone that encloses the brain that is known as cranium, okay. Cranium is a part of a skull that encloses the brain or the it is also known as brain case, okay. The clad craniata is a subdivision of chordata. Members of craniata, they possess a cranium which is a bony cartilaginous or fibrous structure that surrounds the brain, jaw and facial bones. The clad craniata, it includes all vertebrates and the hack fishes that belongs to a class myxini. Okay, myxini. I re repeat, myxini class, which have a cranium but lack a backbone. Hack fish are the only living animal that have a skull but not a vertebral column okay 
The earliest jawless fishes include ostrodomes that have armor like plates acts as a protection but less effective compared to one with jaws that is hinge body feeding structure okay and the jawed craniates they began their radiation which includes the placoderms which have a armored plates protected their heads and some evolved into huge predators due to their offensive and defensive body structure okay this is cranium and this is mandible okay and this is the hagfish it lacks a backbone but uh, it is a member of craniata clad because it possesses a bony skull okay this is the bony skull because it has a craniata okay and it is characterized by the presence of cranium mandible and other facial bones okay just remember that vertebrates are the members of the subphylum vertebrata the clad craniata and the phylum chordata vertebrates they display the four characteristic features of chordata but they are named for vertebral column composed of a series of bony vertebrae joined together as a backbone in adult vertebrates the vertebral column replaces the embryonic notochord okay what are the key innovations okay vertebrates they change the course of the animal evolution when vertebrate replace the notochord with muscles they promote maneuverability and more forceful contraction that led to agile fast moving fishes that began their dominance of the seas okay when jaws becoming a part of related trend complex sensory organs and the nervous system also started among the ancient fishes and continued among vertebrates on land evolution of paired fleshy fins they began as a starting point for all legs arms and wings that evolved among amphibians reptiles birds and mammals gills are for uh, respiration that has evolved as they do not work out of water forming two small out pouches that evolved into lungs the ancestors of land vertebrates they relied more on the paired lungs that on gills as the lungs are also accompanied by more efficient circulatory system okay in short jaws paired fins and lungs they are the key innovations that led to the adaptive radiation of vertebrates okay now uh, come to our class uh, gantha okay class uh, tha uh, or the one which acts jaws The gantha or the jawless fishes are the oldest known vertebrates. The only surviving members of this class are hagfish and lampreys. They are known as cyclostomata, okay, or cyclostomes. Cyclostomes have long, slender body with dorsal, ventral, and caudal tail fins, all in the median plane. Although in their lack of jaws or paired lateral appendages, they represent a very primitive stage of vertebrate development. okay the modern cyclostomes are highly adapted for their particular ways of life the hagfish is a specialized scavenger and the lamprey is a parasite on other fishes okay the lamprey has a round mouth without a skeletal support a rasping tongue and a single dorsally located nostril okay The gill passages are enlarged to form pouches that are lined with gill filaments that serve as a surface for the exchange of respiratory gases. Okay? In cyclostomes as in all fishes water is taken in through the mouth and expelled through the gill passages. As water passes over the thin walled gill filaments dissolved oxygen diffuses into blood and the carbon dioxide diffuses out. Okay? The lamprey But if we see, then uh, it's very soft and smooth, Z-shaped myomures are also present in the trunk part, in the tail protector and the retractor muscles that move the tongue. In this group, a true silom is also seen. These vertebrates that lack jaws, hence uh, they are known as agantha, and the mouth is circular. It works like a circle, which is surrounded by the tentacles. Okay, and the tongue bears. Uh, teeth as shown in this figure this is its tongue and its bearing teeth okay uh, the stomach is absent and esophagus leads into the intestine and the skeleton is also present skull is very simple and very primitive form 
notochordate persists throughout the life history vertebrae are represented by neural arches around the notochord 5 to 16 pairs of gills are present in a sac like pouches heart is two chambered sinus venosus is present okay but conus articulosus is absent blood contains leukocytes and irregular nucleated erythrocytes unlike humans which lack nucleus hence enucleated okay uh, brain is seen with 10 pairs or the less number of cranial nerves are present nasal sac is single and median lateral line sense organ is present sexes are separate gonad is single and without a gonoduct and development may be direct or with a long several stages of larva okay so that was all about the agantha class so this comes to an end. In the next section, we'll be studying about the class Ganathostomata. Okay, so stay tuned. Thank you.